Of the presence of the Lord, the Bible says that the presence of God, the presence of the Lord, it either burns or it blesses. The reality is, is that nobody wants to take part in what I just described. Nobody wants to go to hell throughout all eternity. But the reality is, is that we all deserve it. We know that everyone would choose heaven. Everyone would say, yes, of course. I don't want to be in the presence of God and burn. I don't want to be in the presence of God and suffer. I don't want to be in the presence of God and be sorrowful forever and ever and ever until I'm eventually just cast into a lake of fire to continue in sorrow, death, condemnation, and ruin. But the reality is, is that though we all want to go to heaven, we can't make it there. There's only one way that anyone can find their way of escaping the hell that we all deserve. We need to acknowledge our sinful condition. We need to believe that Jesus Christ paid the penalty, and we need to call upon him for salvation. Who is worthy of hell? The lake of fire, the second death. The Bible says in Revelation 21 and verse 8, All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The truth is, is that many of us, and all of us, in fact, have done much worse than tell just one little lie. But it's that one little lie that is enough to condemn you to hell for all, all eternity. No matter who you are, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No matter who you are, none is righteous, no, not one. And this is the bad news that's contained in the message that Christ brought to us. He said the wages of sin is death. If you're to go and you're to, by your works, try to get to heaven, death is all you're going to receive. God, I'm working. God, I'm working. God, I'm working. God, I'm trying. He goes, death, 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 death. He keeps paying dividends in death. But if we believe that Jesus Christ paid that penalty that we deserve, if he took away that debt that we keep accumulating... The Bible says, though the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to understand that it is a gift. That means we can't pay for it. It's not a purchase. That means we can't work for it. Otherwise, that's a wage or a payment. The gift is something that we can't lose. In other words, if you can lose it, then you never possessed it. If you can lose it, then it was never really a gift. The Bible says that eternal life, it says in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Everlasting life, eternal life never ends. If it ends, then God lied to you. If it ends, you've lost the gift. It's been taken away from you. But God doesn't lie. The Bible says he that believeth on the Son hath life. That means present tense, have it, possess it, it's yours. He that believeth on the Son has it. There's no doubt in their mind. As sure as I'm holding this book here, I know that I have it. You can't convince me otherwise. You can know that you have eternal life. But just believing the Son, what does that mean? We need to believe the gospel. The gospel is this. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him, we know this, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the gospel message is, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he was seen by those that testified, that those that testified, by those that testified. And as we stand here today, we received of that same message. That Jesus Christ came down to this earth because he recognized that you and I are not good enough to get to heaven. He recognized that you and I deserve death and hell throughout all eternity. But God loves you. And so he gave the greatest gift of all. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ, the son of God, born in the flesh of a virgin, lived a perfect life that none of us could live. To the end that we condemned him for jealousy. We condemned him for envy. Put him on a cross. Nailed him there. Let his blood drip to the ground. And there he breathed his last breath before he said, it is finished. And this is what Christ had to do in order to pay for your redemption. He took it a step further. Died on that cross. Was buried for three days and three nights. The Bible says that his soul was dipped into hell. 
but hell could not contain him. Neither did his flesh see corruption. And both were united. He walked the earth testifying of the fact that he himself was written by, risen by saying, touch me, touch me. Behold, it is I. And then he rose again and gave power unto those. And he says, and to this day cries out from heaven in love towards everybody. I want you in the presence of God. I want you in the presence of the Lord. You can't come here, but I provided the opportunity that you could. The Bible says that though our sins be as scarlet, yet they shall be white as snow. We just sang, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth us from all sins. If we were to stand in the presence of God, it's burning and torment in our own state right now. But if we're to stand in the presence of God with the covering that he provided of his son's precious blood, then we can stand justified, just as if I never sinned. God's in the business of saving people. Christ Jesus came to this world to save people. But because he did that for everybody, that doesn't mean everybody's going to heaven. People need to put their faith and trust in him. And one way that we show that we have put our faith and trust in him, just as I can say, hey, this is a free gift to anybody that wants it. Who wants this today? Until somebody raises their hand and says, yeah, I want that book. Then I can go, okay, here you go. In the same way God's in heaven saying, who wants eternal life? I did everything that is needed. I paid the penalty for your sins. I died in your place. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All it takes is somebody saying, yeah, I want that free gift. Yeah, I want eternal life. Yeah, I want to go to heaven forever and ever and ever and escape the torments of hell. There's no magic words, but something like, God save me, is enough from a believing and trusting heart to have Christ Jesus go in a moment, you have eternal life. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. This means you're not trusting Jesus plus Buddha. You're not trusting Jesus plus baptism. You're not trusting Jesus plus be a good person. You are 100% trusting Jesus. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you've believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. And that's the promise of eternal life. And that's how, that's the only way, that's the only door, that's the only opportunity that somebody can stand in the presence of God and be blessed. 